If ever you wonder how you line up electrical boxes, especially when you're using different kinds, welded to box, brick style with the screws on the inside. So you have the screws above the box. The brick boxes or ceramic have the screw on the inside so you don't have to deal with ceramic tile or cement. And I've got this welded double box with the screws are on the outside of the box. Anyhow, I've got a ceramic tile against the face of the door frame that coincidentally is just almost in the right spot. You got to add 5 8 sheetrock plus the thickness of the ceramic tile. Put the level against the face of the electric box, which we've already screwed to the wall. And hang on, that is oh, because now we're proud of one tile width. There we go. Yep. I think you should bring that box out a fraction more towards the level. The people want to know why you call yourself Fruit Loops. <laughs> we ain't talking. <laughs> Yeah, that's how you do it. And when you take the level away and the pencil marks, nobody knows how you got everything just perfect. Take it away. Take it away. Take it away. Take it all away. Yeah, it all goes away. What, pencil or a drill? Need a screw, huh? Screw you. Making them use two inch screws because I ran into inch and five eighths. Should have brought some inch and a quarters. I like locking the drill. Alright, we're down. Amazing. All that work to make sure your electric boxes are lined up just right. I like my electric boxes to be flush with the finished surface. You listen to this, you're a beekeeper. Sometimes I open up a wall, take off the cover plate. An electric box is half inch behind, or crooked, or sideways. And I like them to be dead nuts level. And the fact that this turned on the radio. That's interesting. Got these boxes. I have to use an 8 inch screw and attach that to the lath. Plaster and lath. Junk. Yeah, because we got it it's not square with the wall. I'll put a couple more screws on. Yeah, that's how you do it. So, I got a vapor barrier up here because there's a door here inside the apartment, outside the apartment. Cold wall. So, put a vapor barrier to stop moisture from migrating from the inside through the insulation, soaking the insulation, leading mold and mildew problems. This vapor barrier is just freaking joke. $160 ceiling fan, 150 CFM with a six inch duct straight shot into the chimney. Tiny light bulb. I'm gonna put two pot lights here. One, two on a separate switch. One pot light there. And a wall here and a Vanity with a cultured marble top, and medicine cabinet, shower can, all kinds of toys. Bang, bang, bang. Whole wall shaking. Can't use a smaller hammer. Is a xylophone playing or a harp? I'm working on the rewrite. I'm going to get in trouble for playing music on my videos as if it makes a difference, but. Doing our bathroom. Next, we gotta put the flange in. After the tile, maybe I forget, but wanna see the screws that I use for that? I use number 14 by inch and a quarter. Giant flat screws. Do it right. Perfect fit. My toilet flange that I just saw. Over here. that. It's the right screw for a toilet flange. No sheetrock screws for me. If I wanted to be fancy, I'd use galvanized screws. And I got some decorative tiles to use here on the back of the tub corner. I haven't decided how I want to finish that yet, so we're going to tinker with different fancy tiles. Accent tiles. 
rope. Let's yeah, see how that works out. We're not there yet. Let's see what I'm talking about. We're gonna use subway tiles for the walls. All the walls and the ceiling. No sheetrock in the bathroom, all covered up. Made in USA. Glazed wall tile. Hello, this is Dave Griffin from Griffin, Donlin, and Pinkham, and you're listening to WZXP 7.9 FM, the album station. Music you've been missing. I think he's reading that script because he said music that you have been missing. Needs to get a little loose. Loosen up. Beautiful. All right, Fruit Loops. <laughs> 14 to good for lighting. What we're going to do now is we're going to take off these locating tabs that they put on the boxes because the sheetrock won't go over it. Put a screw in that. Got a nail. Hang on, I got some right here. Here's a sheetrock nail. <laughs> You're supposed to be a carpenter, man, not a hack. Yep. Locating tabs that give you your distance for your thickness. Take those. thinking about a caution that Pisser made when he was working on my truck. He says, never torch something and leave your shop. I always wait a couple hours and wait for something to smolder to catch fire. Good point. Something to catch fire and then you regret it. Too late. Yeah, tension to detail. There's always something you forget anyways. We got lots of wood here for the towel bars, whether I use a 16 spacing or a 24 inch spacing towel bar. That's 16, but lots of wood, a shower rod, lots of spacing for that, lots of wood so I can put the shower rod across and catch some wood, insulated vapor barrier, lots of insulation, pot lights, light switches, GFI. Beautiful. I still like using metal boxes, metal device boxes. I could use an extra weld right there. Yeah, we're going to glue it to the sheetrock after the sheetrock is installed to stop it from moving. I don't like that. I don't like movement. These boxes are 1977. They're extra thick. Like good old suburban sheet metal. Yeah, there it is, right on the friggin' money.
You're off by a 32nd of an inch, we do it. <laughs> Why do I use five days sheetrock? It's a dollar more a sheet and it does a much better job. Smooths out the walls, takes drop kicks better. Uh oh. Got it embedded with some. Uh, I did that to my cell phone face. Where's my cell phone? Over here. I was welding that tow bar up for the Suburban. And I got all kinds of little dimples in my cell phone. <laughs> it happens, huh? Crappiest rigging. <laughs> Alright, got our brass nipples. Got our black and white pipe mixed marriage. Yes. Testing your brazier. <laughs> okay.